Hey, all my Scorpio friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here with your January 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Scorpio, I'm talking about Scorpio rising. This is also applicable if you are a Scorpio moon, Scorpio sun, or if you have three or more uh, personal planets within the sign of Scorpio, this would be applicable to you as well. If you don't know your rising sign, you might want to go to one of the free birth calculators on the internet. You just need your exact time and location of birth to determine that information. So let's jump right in. We are going to start the uh, year off with Mercury stationing direct. This um, is based on the Pacific time zone. So about 7.15 p.m. we'll see Mercury starting its forward motion. This is a significant um, energy because Mercury has not traveled over the galactic center in retrograde meaning going through it three times since 2016 and 2017. The galactic center is at 27 degrees, 16 minutes of Sagittarius. And it reflects a, a point in, in the Shapley cluster where we can uh, access the quantum fields, where we can get divine solutions, inspired solutions, where we can feel like we're getting downloads of information from the universe that help us move our story forward. So as Mercury uh, went all the way up to the eighth degree of Capricorn and then retrograded back over to this 22nd degree of Sagittarius, there was this, it, there's a very strong feeling to me that information was coming through for you, that intuitive hits were coming through for you. And your co-ruling planet Mars is currently one degree away from this galactic center as it heads into its exaltation in a few days. So to me, this really reflects an opportunity to really be brave and how I want to assert myself, how I want to uh, create my own individual uh, legacy in the world, how I want to leave my footprint, for lack of a better term. We see that um, Mercury here is about to go over the galactic center again in about a week, I think it is, on the 11th. And so this is the final time it will do that for a couple of years. And, and I don't know when it will retrograde again. I didn't look that up. But I think this is a really, a, a very opportune time to renovate your dreams, to to allow yourself to think about what, if you want to open a business or you want to expand your business, uh, the sign of Sagittarius naturally rules publishing, uh, business, commerce, uh, marketing, branding, um, things like that, as well as religion. It rules foreign people, foreign countries, uh, foreign experiences. It rules religion. It rules the Supreme Court. It rules the connection to the angelic realm. So I'm not surprised that at this time we're getting this opportunity to truly be brave in, in actually receiving our downloads and, and thinking they're real, giving them a little bit of, of weight. We see here that um, both these planets are making a trine up to Eris. Eris is Mars's little sister and to the North Node. And this is something where it's stretching us to, to really uh, look at ourselves as individuals and allow for that individual expression to be birthed. The sign of Scorpio rules other people's money. It rules sex. It rules death and rebirth. It rules taxes. It rules criminal behavior. There's a lot of commingling in that house that leaves us vulnerable, can leave us uh, sometimes in, in, a, in a place of trauma. And here, I think that this is about an opportunity as Mercury is about to, for the third time, go over this center and your ruling planet is about to go into exaltation, that you have an opportunity to be stand up for yourself and for what you believe and to stretch even more clearly within your heart, in your mind, before you take physical action, um, because that action will be inspired. And I think this is really powerful. Um, Let's go uh, to the fourth. We will see, I'm going to move the time to 12 p.m., pretty standard. And on the fourth, we see Mars move into Capricorn, where they've rolled out the red carpet. They are, you know, Capricorn is where Mars is a welcome guest. 
there is a sense of order here where Mars is is really being a strategic thinker. We also see this on the world axis. So this is a birthing in many ways. It's an opportunity to birth the information that's being garnished through Mercury here. And Venus is on her way and within uh, orb of the great attractor. And the great attractor is another point in this Shapley cluster, but here we're applying the knowledge we've gained. Um, this represents inclusion. It represents embracing diversity. It represents very much the Sagittarian energy um, of being excited about things that are different than us. And this uh, great attractor is at 14 degrees of Sagittarius, 21 minutes. The orb is five to 12 degrees. So if you have any personal planets between 29 degrees of Scorpio and 26 degrees of Sagittarius, then you have a, a, um, a conjunction with this point. And the closer and tighter the conjunction, the more intense you will feel this influence. And if you have something at 26 degrees Sagittarius, this is also conjunct the galactic center. So there's two things going on here. But Mars here, as we see, is growing in as it moves into its exaltation. Uh, Capricorn is your third house of, of uh your community, your networks, it's naturally ruled by Gemini. So it is going to, you know, have this mercurial feel. It's going to be what I think, what I speak, how I interact with my workmates, my teammates, my siblings. It represents my roadways, you know, so all my daily activities are sort of encapsulated in, in this mercurial energy. So as we move into your, um, Mars moves into your third house, this is about being able to build structure. And Sagittarius is your second house. There we see our self-worth. So I think that this is really an opportunity for Scorpio to look at your self-talk. Is your self-talk aligned to what you want to experience? And through these epiphanies, through these uh, connection to these places within the universe that support us rather than uh, are trying to pull us under, we can gain benefit. Right now, we see that Mercury is still in this beautiful trine to Eris. Eris is the street fighter. She stands up for what she believes in. She's at this Piscean, very spiritual um, uh, uh, degree. And we see that Mars is in a growing uh, tighter and tighter uh, trine to Jupiter. Jupiter in Taurus, which has been going on for a while and will continue through the Taurus energy until late May. But now we can really start to put things into place. Taurus is the natural ruler of the second house. So we're talking about a money here. We're talking about money and leadership in the Capricorn energy. And we're also talking about Capricorn is disciplined, you know, and, and I want to kind of take that in a way where it's not necessarily being disciplined to get up every day and, you know, pound the pavement and make those phone calls, but disciplined in the way I'm perceiving myself and my value within what I'm building. I, I feel like that's where, where uh, Saturn itself is is transforming and has been transmuted. We see Mars making this nice trine, I'm sorry, sextile here to Saturn in Pisces. Again, this is a spiritual house. This is a house where I can choose to see the wisdom of my disruption or the challenges in my life and have them uh, really give me the resources and the confidence to move forward. And sometimes I want to escape, but here, this is a brave type of, of aspect between the trines to both Eris and Jupiter and the sextile to Saturn. Mars and Mercury are willing to be aware of how I'm thinking, be aware of the self-talk. And rather than criticize it, it's just a point of information in order to move the story forward. You know, I don't know that we can really... Uh, I can't personally erase my experiences, but what I can do is turn them into tools that empower me. And I, I want to reiterate that Mars being at this zero degree is a, a birth of some kind, a birth into the material world. Capricorn doesn't really count um, in its own emotional body when it when it conceives an idea it wants to build it it wants it to be seen in in the real world in the 3d world so this to me is very favorable for those for that energy moving forward now let's go to uh the 11th 
we have a new moon on the 11th in um, Capricorn. And let me get to the time. The time of this new moon will be 3.57 a.m. And I think this is, again, you know, this is why I love the degrees because I start to see patterns. And in 2022, 2023, we had a, a series of 16 degree moons. And now this was, that was the cancer, the self-care, the intuition, the healing. And now we're seeing the, a series of new moons at the 20th degree. I think we'll have five in total. I believe it started in November of 2023 and takes us to March of 2024. And this in Capricorn is like, to me, it's like, okay, I'm getting practical. I'm being pragmatic. I'm being disciplined. Yeah, I know I've got stuff that that is uh, I, places I feel insecure or places I feel unsure. Yes, I know I have doubts and fears sometimes, but in this dark of this new moon, I am willing to um, to set the seeds for a new and transformed experience in my life. We see that this moon is making a square to both the South and the North node. The South node is a place where I've been overly cooperative. Capricorn always squares uh, Libra, but at the same time, the ruling planet of Capricorn Saturn is exalted in Libra. So the tension that is usually there is to stand in leadership beyond if people liking me, <laughs> you know, Libra wants to be, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Nice, nice. So here, you know, sometimes uh, being a little bit out disruptive is actually for the greater good. So here, that's what I think planting these seeds for whatever your, your individual, what you want to birth into this, this material world. And here we also see this square to, uh, north node which is in aries which is going to indicate something about the self and eris is in many ways about the self she's willing to stand up for herself and this square is to me will i give in to the crowd to what's expected of me to what other people want for me or am i willing to stand in alignment for what i want for myself i think that's really important aries is um uh, your sixth house of work. So this is an opportunity for you to be able to, uh, you know, rewrite how your everyday activities go and start to create something that feels really powerful for you. Now, I want to mention here on the same day as this new moon, we see Mercury in an exact conjunction to the galactic center and Venus, the planet that rules our money and our self-worth is in a conjunction with the great attractor, that great attractor at 14 degrees, 21 minutes of Sagittarius. So I think this is so powerful. And then here we see Mars at the fifth degree of its exaltation Capricorn. This is the Leo degree, self-expression, being willing to put myself out there and uh, risk my own sense of self. And I say that because I think when the human is following its true North, then the, the ups and the downs of the human experience become more doable, more palatable, because there's a reason why when we're just floating for money and trying to make money, it becomes very uh, irritating. And here we see Mars is still in this beautiful aspect to Saturn. And this is something where I feel like uh, Saturn represents sort of uh, Mr. Miyagi. And here we see um, Daniel son, you know, in, in Mars and they're, and Saturn is teaching and encouraging Mars to stay the course, to pace itself. And in that way, you can get the results you're looking for that are long lasting. And we see this beautiful exact trine on this new moon from Mars to Jupiter. I, I just can't help but think Yahoo, you know, this is me expanding myself. This is me seeing myself in a way that where my hopes and dreams are viable and they can support me in the material world. Now we do have this little challenge of this square and a half from Mercury to Uranus. And I think that's sort of this challenge between these you know, Uranus is very um, liberating. It's very individualistic as well. And here 
but with Mercury on the galactic center, this may be where there's some kind of literally a download, but the download puts you in a place of having to choose yourself or the crowd or the other person or the other situation. Um, because I think that that by choosing yourself, then you actually can support the other situation more excitedly. And I want to offer this because Scorpio, it, you know, as, it, as Scorpio rising, this is your first house. This is going to be in the South node will be in the house behind you. It's in the 12th house. So there could be some things that come up for you in this square and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. Where did that square and a half go? Well, that square and a half is actually to Mars because when I clicked on, uh, I'm, I was wrong there. Pardon me. So this might be about taking action. <laughs> bravery in action. But again, I want to emphasize that with Libra being your your south, your 12th house, there could be a sense of a little bit of feeling like you're supposed to be more cooperative than you want to be. And I and I want to encourage you to stay the course. Again, this new moon is at your degree. And I think transforming yourself into your own how do I want to say this? I guess, Scorpio, what I'm saying is that when you follow your own inspirations, you become a leader and you inspire others to follow their inspiration. So I think this is super powerful and I think it's going to bring a sense of, of satisfaction to you. That's the way I want to put it. All right, let's go on. So I'm going to move this over to 12 p.m. again and we're going to move to the 13th where we see Mercury move into Capricorn. It's going to be a little later in the day, but we are um, we are now seeing Venus is still in conjunction with the great attractor, and she will be on her way shortly to the galactic center. Uh, Mercury is still within orb to the galactic center. So this is, again, this whole first half of um, even all the way through the month, because we're including Venus in this, but this this Mercury transit is really giving me an opportunity to gather information to root myself into a bigger picture of what I want to experience and where I want to go. Um, meaning making money. I'm really talking about career, I feel like. A lot of this Aries energy is in your sixth house. Uh, and that Aries energy is, is um, influencing you and supporting you to move your work life forward. Mars's rules Aries. Um, all right. So as Mercury moves into um, Capricorn, the thoughts are going to become about the building. The thoughts are going to be like, how do I implement this? How do I put this within my schedule? Where do I carve out the time? How am I standing in leadership? And I want to offer this too, because um, we see this, this going to be a growing trine uh, between Mercury and Jupiter, and we see Mars is in trying to this aspect right now. So I think, or to this planet, Jupiter, sometimes I get ahead of myself. Yeah. So I think this is good because this is about, again, expanding my thoughts, thinking about, you know, how can I grow my business? Where is my vibration as I do that? Am I walking in fear? Am I walking in faith? Um, am I really engaging my team? And this is really an opportunity to continue to align, align, align. And if you have a stutter, a, a hiccup, a, a doubt, then you just connect with spirit and say, thank you for giving me the courage to continue to move forward. All right, let's go to the 19th. And this is something a day when I think we're actually going to see a little something uh, potentially on the world stage because we have uh, the sun and Pluto in conjunction exactly in Capricorn. Pluto rules uh, other people's money. It rules power and control. It rules criminal behavior and things that are hidden underneath. It rules toxicity. And the sun is here bringing to light something. And that 29th degree is the very final degree of Capricorn. It reduces down to an 11. The 11 is the master number of thought. So I want to offer it this way because this conjunction will go on for a few days and we, we may feel a little bit of um, something just may happen on the world stage or within the media uh, that we, you know, just brings about something completely 
you know, we could not have imagined during um, the last few years how the workplace would change, how we would go from being required to be 40 hours a week in the office to being able to work from home. So I think that there's just going to be something that is transformative. And, you know, I'm trying not to go to any um, dark places because I don't really want that to happen, but we're kind of in a little bit of a disruptive time right now. We also see that during this conjunction, Mercury is in an exact trine to Jupiter. So that this is a good thing. And we see Mars is still um, here in, in good aspect to, to Jupiter as well. So as we continue to build our own personal lives, uh, we represent uh, something, we represent balance first off, and we also represent the law of attraction and how as individuals, our focus brings about an experience that may not seem like it goes with what's happening with everyone else. Now, Venus here is approaching, she's within two de or within two degrees of the galactic center now, and she's getting some, some steam, I think, because as she enters Capricorn, which is normally, I would say that this is normally she'd be kind of buttoned up there. I think because of Mercury's back and forth three times over that galactic center that she too has garnished some information from her friend and that she's willing to start to build on her skills. She's willing to start to look at herself as a valuable commodity that can bring resources into her personal experience. So I think this is very powerful for you because again, uh, Capricorn is your third house. So you can build, you know, new things within your everyday life. I think that's very, very powerful. All right, let's go on to the 20th where the sun moves into Aquarius. We're still feeling this conjunction. Um, and um, we are now seeing how Mercury has been making a sextile to Saturn. Again, sort of potentially bringing up old things and at the same time there's a there's a new way of, of perceiving them and we're still feeling this trine here to jupiter and then the next day we have pluto re-entering uh aquarius it pluto dipped its toe into aquarius in 2023 and now it's going to pretty much reside there with a brief retrograde later in this 2024 but for the most part, it's gone into Aquarius to give us a whole new possibility. The house of Aquarius, which is your fourth house of home, um, could very much bring about sort of a, um, a, a new way of looking at how you want to live, you know? And, and as we see Scorpio, you putting some real... Um, spit and polish on your own, your resources, how you want to make your money, how you want to express yourself. And I do believe that the internet is going to birth platforms over the next few years that are going to offer people so much more uh, control and influence over their resources. And I use the word resources rather than money because it's easier to wrap our mental, our human brains around that. With money, lots of numbers can trigger us in some ways. So I think there's going to be some sort of uh, awareness, uh, maybe even a, an epiphany, something that helps you uh, integrate the challenges you've experienced, maybe even some of the darkness you've experienced in your life. Pluto, again, while it, it is a planet that really wants the best for you, it kind of has to rip some pretty big band-aids off before uh, that can take place. Now on the 23rd, we will see Venus enter Capricorn and, you know, here again, this is not her most fancy, most sexy sign, but it feels like for me, she was ready to hunker down and, and use her skills here to create the things that she wants to, to liberate herself from being enslaved to other people's money or to an employer or to uh, somewhere where, where she's not the master of her own domain. So I think we're going to see um, and as we move into February, each one of these planets is going to be conjunct Pluto, uh, which is going to be powerful again, because Pluto, wherever Pluto goes, it's going to rip something up, bring something up, and it's going to want to remove any toxicity. Mm -hmm. So I venture to say here, we could be removing 
fears. We could have fears stoked, but we could also be, they could be fear busters where I'm so frustrated that I'd rather walk through uh, the fear than to surrender my power to another and feel like I'm acquiescing or I'm enslaved to something mm -hmm. that doesn't really make me happy. Again, I feel like there's a lot of energy going on with, you know, how you make your money and your resources. On the 28th, Venus is going to make an exact trine. She's in a growing trine to, to Jupiter here. And I think this is important because these two are natural, uh, naturally good friends. Um, sometimes in their lowest energy, there can be vanity and, and an expansion and gluttony and entitlement. But for the most part, in the earth signs, they're a little more down to earth, a little bit more... Uh, uh, about expanding what can be grown from the physical experience. So I think this is going to be uh, something favorable and something to focus in on. We have on the 25th at 9.53 a.m. Pacific, we're going to have a full moon in Leo. And this full moon is at the Leo degree the fifth degree, we see the sun is still, while it's in a loose conjunction, there's still a conjunction here. And we see the sun is squaring Jupiter. And well, th this is some sort of illumination. To me, you know, the, the full moon is the brightest phase of the moon. It's where we illuminate something comes to a culmination something comes into our awareness i think it's going to be something psychological a deeper imprint somewhere i hold myself back and now i have an opportunity rather than trying to villainize myself for not moving fast enough or not knowing this sooner now i'm going to be like okay this is where the block has been this is why i haven't felt the expansion i wanted to feel and now as a result of that i can start to use this square in my favor. I always think that a square represents sort of this point of awareness where I have a habitual way of thinking. And then I have this, these new thoughts, new beliefs, new ideas that I'm implementing and integrating into my physical experience, but I'm not seasoned. I don't have enough skill yet. So those of us that, you know, talk about the law of attraction, many people will say, okay, I'm just going to give it out to the universe, but that's not how the law of attraction works. The law of attraction works based on your emotional body. And so you're working in tandem with the universe. You are calling forth an experience, standing, holding space for that joyously while the universe puts all the components together. And that's very different than throwing your power out to the universe. And Scorpio, you know, you like to have your power as you should. Okay. Now we're going to uh, have the final day of that I'm going to talk about is the 27th. On the 27th, I'm going to go to noon again, pardon me. we will see an exact conjunction between Mars and Mercury and Capricorn. And it's squaring the, the nodes, which is just the same running theme about, you know, my own individuality, what I want to birth uh, versus, you know, giving into the group, the crowd, the, what I'm used to. Again, Libra being your, your 12th house, there can be a feeling of not being seen or feeling a little invisible there. And now the South node is traveling through this um, very, um, the 12th house very much represents uh, ancestors and, and uh, ancestral, it's a historic, it's a soul, soul's history house. So here there's that, you know, we're still in tension between being cooperative yet, you know, wanting to birth an individual part of myself. And we're running into this, you know, we've had this square to Chiron. Chiron is the wound and the gift. So sometimes this may be where people are starting to label you, you know, that scorpionic stinger that, oh, there you go again being demanding, controlling. But I think when you're standing in awareness, you'll realize that you're actually going to give people an experience that is liberating. Here we see Uranus making a beautiful trine to this conjunction. And this could literally be an epiphany that you can take action on and feel good about. And, and this is the Leo degree. 
This is the Libra degree. So I think it's important that, you know, your individuality, your individual expression actually can bring a sense of cooperation. And I also think if you're trying to birth something of yourself on the internet, on a platform, you know, or you're branding yourself and you're starting to, you know, take all the, you know, pictures, you could be in any uh, professional genre. We're all, you know, we're all ruled by the internet now. So this could be a real moment where you feel a little bit of, um, of that warm fuzzy of your, of what you're creating and that it's actually viable and possible, but we're still in process. So I just want to make, make that, um, aware, but I do think 2024 overall is going to be a year of moving the story forward. And while we may see disruptions in the outside world, those of us that are familiar with the laws of the universe and then harness them into the planetary transits will feel a sense of liberation and freedom versus a sense of being tethered to something uh, that it doesn't align with the truth of who we are or what we want to experience. All right. That's it for my Scorpios for January, 2024. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book a reading with me, I am available. Uh, I also do a live show on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Pacific time where we uh, pull a tarot card, do an angel reading and get the angels advice for moving forward through the week ahead's transits. And um, please hit that like button, subscribe, share, and be sure to hit that notification bell. We'll have lots of fun content coming out this year. All right, Scorpio, I'll see you next month in February with your monthly. Have a lovely, happy, happy new year.